Hello, welcome back. So I have moved out to the porch and as you will no doubt hear the wind noises are much more extreme but uh, the lighting is much better. I seem to be missing a brush. <coughs> Here it is. Okay, so I'm ready to do oil glazes on this painting of the main drag in Ocracoke. I'm trying to avoid saying downtown Ocracoke. <laughs> Such an oxymoron, but I guess it is. I don't know. I guess it's downtown Ocracoke. So that was a little bit of Indian yellow. This is some oxide red. The most typically when I do these glazes, um, there's, there's, uh, I do a layer of warm and a layer of cool, most typically, although I'm, I'm free to do any combination of colors in the world. Anything I want is legal, but I usually just limit it to, you know, the colors that are needed to shift the overall palette, the direction I want it to go in. So let's do a little bit more orange and Indian yellow. I love Indian yellow. It's a trans very, very transparent, very, very pungent, powerful yellow color. But on your palette, it almost looks like either an orange or a brown or a mustard yellow. But it's transparent, so when it goes on your painting, it's actually a very intense yellow. I'm using it in a very, very, very delicate manner here, of course. I don't want, I don't want that hot yellow. I really mean cold yellow. I don't want that <coughs> zinger yellow look. Let's do a little bit more the oxide red, which is not red, of course. It's brown. When you're, if you're an artist, you get used to these weird colors. You know, Indian red, yellow ochre, oxide red. None of those, those are not red or yellow. Those are all browns. Those are just the names of the colors. Okay, let's do some blue <laughs> up here. Just a little more phthalo. <laughs> and yes, my glazes usually overlap with each other quite a bit. I don't I don't do one area of one color and you know and then have a boundary between the two. No, they they run together quite a bit. Um Trying to decide what colors I want up there in the corners. Okay, I'm doing a, two blues. The two blues, I, I pretty much, for the last, man, I don't know how long, 10 years, maybe more, I have limited myself, not in order to limit myself, but just I find I, I really don't need anything else. I almost always have a... Uh, an ultramarine blue and a phthalo blue on my palette and I find that 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 works for me but one thing that keeps me from having to mess around with cobalt blue so I don't have to mess with the heavy metal stuff and I, f I just find I'm able to get whatever color I want using those a warm blue and a cool blue Maybe someday in the future I'll discover the glory of some other blue, but I haven't discovered it yet, so that's what I'm sticking with. I'm going to do a little bit of purple here now, just to really darken a little bit in the corners. Plus I love just a touch of purple. I'm using purple in all four corners. Isn't that funny? Now, do I want to... This rag is wet. That won't do very well, I guess. I'll have to use a paper towel. Do I want to lift anything out here? And I think, yeah, I do. Base of the sky here. Let's get this as light as it needs to go. 
the front face of this building right here is catching full sun so that's going to be very bright and by the way the, the photograph that I'm working from I took yesterday is not in full sun at all so I'm really making up inventing a lot of this color it's not my favorite thing to do I'd much rather have a photograph that actually reflects the light you know the lighting I want to paint but And even the sky, let's lighten that up just a little bit. Okay, so I think that's all. I'm going to let this be a really short uh, episode. I think I'm going to do colored, uh, not colored, I'm going to do pencils next. Yeah. Okay, so coming along, let's see how, does the glare look terrible there? Not too bad. Okay, thanks for watching. I'll be back in a bit to do some pencil lines.